deciding not to, to take a time out from the mall, drop that ball from Mike? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, first off, it's just going to be more proud of our team. Um, give the Lakers a lot of credit. They played great tonight. Um, and I think we had a five to go. They're up by eight. And we closed out in 20 to 10 run, I believe. And uh, for those that have been following us for a long time, uh, that's Jamal Murray right there. I mean, he, he, can, he can struggle, he can struggle, he can struggle. He sees one go in, and he is, uh, he's never shying away from the moment, the spotlight. And uh, that was just an incredible play. They, they were smart late. They put LeBron on him. They put AD on Nicola so they could switch. And, uh, and he got to his spot. And it was great because everybody on the team, coaches, players, all night long kept on telling Jamal to stay with it. Stay with it. We know what you're capable of. We need you. And uh, for him to go six of eight in the fourth quarter and score 14 points was amazing. And, uh, yeah, I called the timeout, the possession before we scored. We got the stop, tie game. Uh, why let them get set? Why let them? Because when they can get set and they switch out everything, you might not even get the ball in bounds. So I want to make sure we could just flow into it and let our best players make plays. Uh, Nikola Jokic, 27, 20, and 10. Nothing else you can say about him. I thought Aaron Gordon's defense on AD in the second half was incredible. We changed up some matchups, and, uh, and our guys did a hell of a job of it. But this is just a great example of any of, uh, as I told him at halftime, like I did not like how he walked off the court at halftime. I felt like we were feeling sorry for ourselves a little bit. They came in, they were kicking our ass, and we dropped our heads. I didn't like our spirit. I didn't like our disposition. And I told them that at halftime. I said, it's a lot of basketball left. Stay with it. You know, this is a funny business. And, uh, and our guys did that. And it wasn't just the starters. I thought, you know, the guys off the bench may not have been big minutes, but they all did their job. And uh, this was a complete team win. Coach, you've always talked about the mental toughness of this team and just what they consistently bring to the table. You've talked about that with Jamal Murray especially. Just to be in that moment heading into half and then to immediately, but not even immediately flip the switch, but kind of go down even more after that. Just what does it say about the team sticking with their process? Oh, it's, uh, it speaks to a team that's got tremendous confidence in uh, themselves and more importantly in the collective. Yeah, I mean, we we're a championship team with the reigning champs. And, uh, you know, we might get down by 20 points, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to roll over. I mean, that's, that's not who we are. That's not who I am. And we're, that's no, never been a part of Denver Nugget basketball in these last nine years. So um, it speaks to guys just trusting the process, staying with it making the necessary adjustments, then guys stepping up. you got to make plays to get back in it and win a game when you're down by 20. And we had a lot of guys step up and make big play after big play. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we did our job. You know, even though, like, I thought KCP just said something to the whole room. Enjoy tonight. That, that was an emotional win, incredible win, in front of an outstanding crowd, best fans in the NBA. Enjoy it tonight. Uh, but we just did our job. We, we won two games at home. There's a lot of basketball to be played. And uh, we'll enjoy it tonight and get back to work tomorrow. Michael, you, you mentioned not uh, liking the way the team walked into the locker room. Look, with Jamal specifically, I mean, things kind of got worse in the third quarter for a little bit before they got better. What, what exactly were coaches, were teammates sort of having to say to him? Or is he a kind of guy who can kind of lift himself up? Well, he can definitely lift himself up, but it's always impactful when you have uh, 17 brothers in arms, you know, supporting you and encouraging you. And uh, everybody's saying, Jamal, you know, just, just play your game. If you're open, shoot it. You know, the, what you don't want a guy doing is now all of a sudden getting gun shy because now he's not playing his game. Um, he's not going to be held, you know, um, scoreless or uh, not making shots for four quarters. And tonight in that fourth quarter was a great example of that. So... Um, like guys like DeAndre Jordan, the entire bench, the second half, just em imploring guys to stay with it, keep your heads up, you know, call a timeout, we're down 20, stay with it. You know, just got to chip away. You know, I don't have a 20-point play in my playbook. You know, you just got to chip away at it. You got to get stops. And I think at one point in that third quarter, we got 10 stops in a row, uh, which is outstanding. And, and, and that was, you know, the crowd got into it and – that's the second game in a row where they got off to a great start, had us on our heels, and then we kind of uh, got our defense into the game, and that brought us life. Coach, what can a moment like that do for Jamal, you know, going forward? He struggles overall in the two games, but he has that kind of moment at the end where he brings it 
kind of full circle back together. We're going to do in the future. Uh, honestly, I mean, it, it's, I don't think it will do much for him because he's already, already a very confident player. Um, I was reminiscing about the first year we made the playoffs six years ago in the first round against New Orleans. And, you know, people are begging me to take him out of the game in game two because he was struggling. And I remember telling him at halftime, I said, hey, man, like, I love you. You're our future. Go out there and play. And he wins a game for us in that second quarter. And that allowed us to win that series. Um, so Jamal is a guy that he, it doesn't take much for him. You know, he knows that this entire team, staff, players, whatever you want to call it, have his back. But he's a confident young man. And making a shot like that um, is only going to help him in that regard. But I'll be honest, I don't think he needs much help. He's a, he, his playoff exploits, you know, all the commercials right now, you know, that there is a playoff Jamal. There is. I mean, just the proofs and the stats. Man, what he does in the postseason is just incredible. And a lot of guys that have been all stars can can never even come close to doing what he does in the postseason. Coach, when you break down the team, you say family. What does family mean to you? Family means you got each other's backs, good times and bad times, up 20 and down 20. Uh, if a guy is 0 for 10 or he's 10 for 10, uh, you know, family is unconditional love. And I, I think we have had just. So many examples of that in my nine years, but this is a really connected group, and they share in the other person's success. Now, there is no me in that locker room. It's we, and that's what a family is about. You mentioned it. I can hear you. You mentioned AG. There are so many moments defensively on this stage when you stepped up. Where does that rank, given how hot AD's coming into that? Oh. Yeah, that was the decision at halftime. You know, uh, AD was cooking. He didn't feel us. We didn't give enough help. Um, and then we just, you know, uh, Joke wanted to guard him the first couple of minutes, see if we can disrupt him. And then we went to Aaron on him. You know, we went to Nicole on Rui. We went to KCP on LeBron. You know, KCP did an outstanding job as well. Um, but, you know, they have two all-stars over there. They have two all-NBA players over there. They're talented, man. There's a reason that team was in the Western Conference Finals last year. And as I said, starting off these playoffs, don't get caught up in the number in front of the teams. The seeding does not matter. There's eight really talented teams in the Western Conference playoffs, and that Laker team is extremely talented, and they've given us all we can handle two games in a row. So going into L.A., we're going to have to be a lot better. But you know, Aaron Gordon, 14, seven boards, and, and just the, the willingness to go out there and say, you know what, my job is to try to slow this guy down. He, he, he's dominating the game right now. It's my job to slow him down, and he did that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, just like in game in game one, you know, everybody talks about the third quarter and how great that was. But to me, it was a 14-2 run late in that second quarter that tied the game up. Tonight, we, I think we closed 14-5, to five, and then we started 8-3. to three. So that momentum into the fourth quarter got us in striking distance, kept our great fans in their seats making noise and, ma and making this a really tough place to play. So you always want to close quarters and take that momentum, and I would I couldn't – couldn't agree more. I, I thought that close to that third quarter was, uh, I mean, that's a 22 to eight run when you combine the close of the third and start of the fourth. And uh, when you're down 20, you know, you need all that. Good, Scott. I'll give you a bad, I'll give you a bad boy question. Fair to say, Michael Porter Jr.'s best game in the playoffs in his young career? That's tough to say. I mean, um, obviously a 22 and nine tonight, six of 10 from three. You know, but 20 games last year on our way to a championship, I thought Michael had some great games last year as well. Um, but how about this, his, his best game with this playoffs? <laughs> like that? All right. Thanks, everybody.